welcome to everyone today. And uh, if you're a guest with us here this afternoon, or morning, excuse me, if you're a guest with us today, we're so glad that you are here. We welcome you and pray that the presence of the Lord has and will continue to touch you here today. I want to read a couple of verses to you if you have a Bible or device or some way to follow along. Otherwise, you can just simply listen. I want to read beginning with John chapter 1, starting with verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word. Somebody say Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And with the exception of Adam and Eve, everything up to that point that God made, it was made by the Word of God. He spoke, and it was so. He said, let there be, and that's what happened. And skipping down to verse number 14, and the Word, one more time, somebody say Word. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I have wrestled this morning. I know some don't care about titles and whatever, but most of the time they just help. And they also, if I don't give one, the media department needs one. So I'm always trying to think about it. And I've wrestled with a couple of titles for this morning. And so at this point, I'm going to just settle on this one. I want to preach to you for a little bit here this morning on Beyond Words. Beyond Words. Father, I thank you for your wonderful presence that is here today. I thank you for the privilege once again that no matter what the circumstances are, that we don't have to be in a building, we don't have to be in a facility, we can be outside, we can be at home, we can be wherever, and you fill all space and all time. And I thank you for that again today. I thank you for your presence that has been manifested here today already. And now, God, I pray that you would continue the work that you've already done here and minister through your word that you would speak to our hearts and our lives today. Once again, God, I, I don't want to just preach a sermon this morning as an expected part of a service. I want to be a messenger, a conduit that you can speak through. I yield myself to you. I trust you today for your anointing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. In the beginning was the Word. And by the Word, Hebrews says it this way, the worlds were framed by the Word of God. And that things which are seen came from things which are not seen. I don't think for most of you here today I need to really preach to you about the power of the Word of God, whether that's Logos or Rhema. I believe I am among people today that believe in the power of the Word of God. Amen. 
I believe that. I believe, again, whether it's the written Word of God, you believe that the Bible is the Word of God. You, you don't believe that it's just a good book. You don't believe that it's just a religious book. But you truly believe that the Bible is the divinely inspired Word of God. And no matter what anybody says today, no matter what anybody's opinions are, you are not going to change in your faith that the Bible is is the Word of God. And then there are people here today, and some of you can testify firsthand of your not only your faith in a rhema, a word, a fresh word, a promise, a, a message that was preached. Not only do you have faith in the written Word, but you've got faith in the power of the spoken Word. Do I have anybody here today that can testify to the fact you've got some promises God gave you and you have seen those promises come to pass no matter what it looked like, no matter how long it took them to finally come to pass, but you have seen them come to pass. Those of you that are still in the phase of holding on to a promise, I, I challenge you to let your faith be encouraged by those who just said or responded about promises that are fulfilled. And I promise you, if you found some of them and heard their story, it wasn't given. Some of them it was given on Sunday and fulfilled on Monday a hundred years later. But we believe in the power of the Word of God. But I want you to hear me today. I, I know that preaching is not giving a speech. It's funny because some of you and people I know and love dearly, it's not like somebody that's just trying to be obnoxious, but anytime I ever say something about preaching not being a speech and not trying to be an orator and all of that without fail, somebody will pass me after service and say, Brother Wright, that was a great speech this morning. So I know that preaching and teaching is not speaking from a natural perspective. But I think there are some principles that you can sort of use to try to help guide you some. At the end of the day, may I go on record to say we're supposed to be led by the Spirit. We're supposed to say what God wants us to say, how He wants us to say it, etc., etc. But one of the things and a part of, I don't know how many majors require this, but as a business major, I had to take a speech class. And one of the things I learned is if you're going to make a speech, you need to know what you're getting at. You need to know what the goal is. It a persuasive speech? Is it an informative speech? And 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 what is your target? And and there are a lot of times, not by my, hopefully not through my flesh. I come to a service. I I come to the pulpit with a little bit of an understanding of where it's going. And and there's kind of a single purpose you feel. But then there's other times that you feel like there's multiple things, and and it's a little bit more challenging in those moments, at least for me. And this is one of those mornings where I feel like I have something to say from the Lord, but the purpose is kind of mixed. So I hope that in some way, one of those things at least will have application to you this morning. Let me say this to you. Creation was by words. But salvation required hands. While God spoke creation into existence, He did not speak salvation into existence. For the process of salvation to come about, God had to robe Himself in flesh and become a man, and take upon him the form of a man. It was okay for God to say, let there be light, and there was light. It was okay for God to speak creation into existence. But it wasn't God's mouth that was the primary part of the process of salvation. It was God's body. It was God's hands. 
He had to physically be involved in that process. You don't have to raise your hand, but I wonder how many of you, when I first read my, or tell you where I was starting from, and you immediately thought, well, we're going to get a great doctrine message here today. Words are necessary. But I've come to challenge us today, and not only challenge us, but I am also trusting that the Spirit of the Lord, I know He's already worked here today, but that He's going to do even more here before we leave today, and that that, there will be a divine touch. Not just a message, not just a word, but I am believing that there will be a touch from the Lord today beyond what has already happened. And you know, I think one of the challenges, maybe not for some of you, but for the rest of us, and you know, if you're a guest today and you may not know this, I was born and raised in this. My parents came to start this church in 1970. I've been an apostolic. I was raised an apostolic. It's all I've ever known. I, I've been to a couple other church settings for a couple of different occasions, but this is what I know. So I, I don't know if every other church church is like this. I'm guessing maybe not, but I'm just going to tell you one of the most challenging things the last couple of weeks is for us to gather together and not touch each other. Some of you may not feel that way, that's okay, but there's a bunch of us that it's a really hard thing to not walk up and not just grab a hand and shake a hand, but to throw arms around each other. And it's a really challenging thing when the Spirit of the Lord begins to move, whether it's during worship or when we have taken time to pray. And, and we've talked about it, my wife and I have talked about it, and she's talked to others about it. I, I don't know how it's felt for you, but the conclusion of service is the last couple of weeks has been a very challenging thing from the standpoint of the worship team and even myself. It appears as though, and this is what we have sort of seen to understand, and understand this is not an accusation, it's an observation. It appears as though the struggle is a lot of you don't know what to do. Because we are so used in those moments feeling the prompting of the Spirit. And this is, if you're a guest today, this is my daughter. We live in the same house, so I'm not breaking the guidelines. It is a, there's a prompting to want to go and lay a hand on a shoulder or a head. Because there comes a point when words are not enough. In fact, there comes a point when words are not even what's needed. Hopefully I can help a few of you husbands here for a moment. Hopefully the Lord will help me minister to you if nobody else today. 28 years Two weeks ago, 20, I think two weeks ago, I, I'm still struggling with time. Two weeks ago, we celebrated 28 years. I didn't even know I'd been alive 28 years, much less married 28 years. But we celebrated 28 years of marriage. I think I've learned a little bit. But I still, there are times when she expresses herself, and I think, I, I think this is that moment where I need to say something. And I do, only to find out. Where'd she go? I just needed a hug. Of course, the flip side is there's been moments. I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a hug moment. I'm pretty sure that's what we need at the end of this is a hug. You don't have anything to say? But my point is, there's times that it's not words. We walk by faith and not by sight. 
We're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. We're supposed to walk by faith and not by feeling. But we were made as human beings to feel. And in fact, if you don't think feeling is important, then you have done something to turn off who God made you. Because while we should not rely upon feelings, God wired us to feel. Uh, I, I guess this is another one of those little bit different days, but here we are. I did a, I just noticed, actually for the, one of the first time, I think the first time ever, I just happened to notice this a day or two ago when I was looking up something on Google. I, I hadn't noticed that it does this before. If you've never noticed, if you do a Google search at the top, of, towards the top of the page, there will be a line that will tell you how many things popped up with regards to your search. And as I was preparing for today and just kind of, I, I believe there's great benefit in using natural examples for spiritual things and so understand that's the motivation behind this, but I, I went on to Google and I just simply put in the words, the power of touch. And I glanced up, and if you were to put in the word simply the power of touch, there are 2 billion 570,000 results in 0.52 seconds. I don't know if it's the same way. I haven't really paid attention to whether between my laptop and my desktop. I don't know if it varies. Not that it really matters too much, but at least on my laptop, there are typically 10 links. So to put that in perspective, that's 25,700,000 pages that you would have to go through to just look at the link, just the link, for things about the power of touch. I want to read a couple of things to you here. This article is by a lady named Mariana Konnikova. Get ready for the title of the article. It is just Creativity to the Max. Anybody want to take a guess at the title of the article? You guys are good. <laughs> Touch is the first of the senses to develop in the human infant, and it remains perhaps the most emotionally central throughout our lives. And yet, touch is rarely purely physical. Fields, a researcher, more recent work has shown that the brain is, a very, is, is very good at distinguishing an emotional touch from a similar but non-emotional one. A massage chair is not a masseuse. Certain touch receptors exist solely to convey emotion to the brain rather than sensory information about the external environment. A recent study shows that we can identify other people's basic emotions based on how they touch us even when they are separated from us by a curtain. Another article. Buckle your seat belts as I drop the bomb of the title, The Power of Touch. This is by Rick Shalott. Starts off the same way. Touch is the first sense we acquire and the secret weapon in many a successful relationship. Here's how to regain fluency in your first language. In 2009, he demonstrated that we have an innate ability to decode emotions via touch alone. In a series of studies, 
Hertenstein had volunteers attempt to communicate a list of emotions to a blindfolded stranger solely through touch. Many participants were apprehensive about the experiment. This is a touch-phobic society, he says. We're not used to touching strangers or even our friends necessarily. But touch they did. It was after all for science. The results suggest that for all our creation, or excuse me, all our caution about touching, we come equipped with an ability to send and receive emotional signals solely by doing so. Participants communicated eight distinct emotions. Anger, fear, disgust, love, gratitude, sympathy, happiness, and sadness with accuracy rates as high as 78%. I was surprised, Hurston Stein admits, I thought the accuracy would be at chance level about 25%. With the face and voice in general, we can identify just one or two positive signals that are not confused with each other, says Hurston Stein. Hurton Stein. For example, joy is the only positive emotion that has been reliably decoded in studies of the face. Meanwhile, his research shows that touch can communicate multiple positive emotions. Joy, love, gratitude, and sympathy. Scientists used to believe touching was simply a means of enhancing messages signaled through speech or body language. But it seems instead that touch is a much more nuanced, sophisticated, and precise way to communicate emotions. One more, if you'll bear with me. This one is titled, The Remarkable Power of Touch. Not just the power of touch. Karen Young says, our skin is our largest organ and would measure about two meters if it was laid flat. Given that our bodies are precious real, precious real estate, for something to take up this much room, there must be a good reason for it. Yes, it's to stop infections, and yes, it's to stop our important bits and pieces falling out, but there is another reason. It is the pathway for touch. One of our most powerful and important functions for long-term well-being touch is as important as food and secure, security. Did, did you hear that? For long-term well-being, touch is as important as food and security. If one tender in one tender squeeze, there are so many things that can be said. You'll be okay. I'm proud of you. Yeah, I'm worried about it too. It's scary, isn't it? You're freaking, oops, I meant to rephrase that one, sorry. That was not what I, I, I forgot to edit. I'm just reading, I'm just reading. You are really amazing. <laughs> okay. I know some of you use it. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. I know some of you use the word freaking all the time. But some of us are a little disturbed by that because it's basically a replacement for another word. At least that's the way some of us were raised. Anyway. Ooh. I'll stay off of euphemisms since there's a bunch of us that are very comfortable with them. I think I need a drink of water. <laughs> You're amazing. Come on, talk to me. What's happening with us? I love you. When it's from the right person in the right context, we rarely have to guess the words. The words become irrelevant anyway. Instantly we can feel closer, calmer, and more understood. 
touch is fundamental to the human experience, it is most likely no accident then that the lack of connection, either emotional or physical, is discussed in terms of touched. Tactless, lost touch with, out of touch. No, I'm not here today trying to preach to us we need to be touchy-feely. But I am here today challenging us, not only as individuals in our walk with God, we're not supposed to rely on feeling. We're not supposed to make decisions based on our feeling. But there is a godly designed element of feeling that is a good thing. And God made you and I not to just simply exist off of words, even His words, but God made it possible to be able to reach down to us with his spirit and touch us and I got to be honest and I don't think I'm the only one here today there have been some times in the midst of some of my challenges and trials and tests that I've been walking through that it wasn't the message that was preached it wasn't the words that were spoken but it was the fact that when I got my hands up into the air and I began to just simply focus on God all of a sudden I felt that comforting, reassuring touch. But I'm here also again challenging us today. It's not just about His touch. I don't know, maybe I'm strange. At the end of the day, I think we're all strange. We've all got our quirky ways. I, I know He's my dad, but, but nevertheless... Anybody ever noticed when when uh, when when Bishop is ministering and he, he'll come down on the on the floor and start walking? This is a, this is a hard message to preach with social distancing. It, it got any non-social? I, the official stance of this church in these gatherings is six feet. Hear ye, hear ye. The official stance is social distancing. That being said, is there anybody that's not really freaking out about social distancing? Uh, you, you, all right, thank you. I know I'm setting a bad example. Forgive me. This is one of those moments, do as I say, not as I do. But anybody ever notice Bishop will be ministering and he'll just kind of come and I don't. I, I know I may be weird, Brother Barr, but I'm just like, man, I kind of wish I was that guy right there. There's just kind of, there's something, it's not, I'm tired, I need somebody. It's not that. There's just something that is being communicated. There is something that is being transmitted in that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to stay off my soapbox, but I'm going to get on it again for a moment. That's why technology is never to replace a coming together of people face to face. A tool? Yes. To those of you that are at home that are a part of us that are not comfortable being here this morning, I respect and love you just as much as those here. That's not the point. And I am thankful we have it. And I'm glad you're comfortable enough to stay home and be comfortable but still be a part. And I mean that sincerely. But it's not the same. I used to, I, I'm trying to, y'all, I, I was thinking this morning, please make sure you note that the worship team and the preacher is not under the shade. We're dealing with the same thing a bunch of you are. So if you're sitting there, I wish he'd hurry up and quit because I'm in the sun. I always go on those little tangents and then forget where I'm at, so... Somebody help me. Where was I? Yeah. Yeah. Technology, it doesn't replace touch. Bishop touches shoulders. That's good stuff. Oh, I know. Here it is. I used to, re hopefully I can help somebody with this. I used to struggle. I'm talking for years. I mean, probably I could say at the very least into my 30s. I used to really struggle, even after I became co-pastor, leading Arnold on Sunday. I used to really struggle going to pray for people because I felt like if I'm going to go pray for somebody, I'm supposed to have a word, and I'm supposed to prophesy, and I'm supposed to read their mail. 
You know, one of the best things I ever learned? Sometimes it's okay just to come up and stand there. God, I don't know the need, but I know you know, and I know you can do something. And, and it's not really my words as much that's transmitting something as it is the fact that I'm, I'm communicating that you're not in this by yourself. You're not alone. I, I hope you've been blessed and ministered to by the thought for the day and, and by the messages that have been, pr- I hope that's, a, but at the same time, I want you to hear this pastor today. I value the ability, whether it's in this setting or in that building or whatever the format may be, the value that words are not enough. And sometimes we do need more than a message from God. We just need a touch from God. And sometimes we need more than each other's words. I just need you to let me know I'm here. I did it again yesterday, that experience, that one of those things, and I realize everybody basically does it, but there's just, I I think from the perspective of a pastor, there are things that you feel like are expected of you, that you, if you're not a pastor, you you may do the same thing, but sort of the level of expectation is different, and and so yesterday, I, I went by the funeral home to see Sister Janet Howells, pay respects to her mother, see Sister Howell, and others of the family members that I I knew, and that's that's one of those situations that you're like, what do I say? But it really is amazing. Usually, you really don't have to say anything. You just hug a neck. You just put an arm around somebody, because creation can come about by words. But salvation, and I'm going to add another one, and I'm going to give you some examples anymore, but healing doesn't usually come about by words or by words alone. Oh, hallelujah. Let me give you a couple of examples. If you're familiar at all with the four Gospels to any level, you will know that they don't all start at the same time period. Matthew and Luke will, Matthew actually starts with the genealogy going way back before Jesus. And we get the story of Jesus and his birth from Matthew. Luke, we get the story of Zacharias and his birth and the birth of Jesus and all of that. But, but actually both Mark and John don't really start with the birth of Jesus. In fact, John, as we read, starts with the beginning <laughs> The ultimate beginning, and then you begin to read into John, and he's talking about John the Baptist as the one that's preparing the way. And, and, and so Mark is also similar to that. And so that there, there's a few things, if, I'm not, if I remember correctly, there's a few things in here about the calling of the disciples. There's, there's, uh, there's some things about, um, uh, I think, John in, in, in Mark 1. But, but I want you to notice something that is included in the very first chapter of the book of Mark. We know from Scripture that the first miracle Jesus did was the turning of water into wine. So please hear me. I'm not saying or implying this was the first miracle, and so therefore this is the big example. I'm I'm not saying that. But it is included in the very first chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Before I, before I, let me start with verse 40, chapter 1. There came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Now, now before I read the next verse, just to make sure, if if you're here today and you don't really know a lot about leprosy in the context of Scripture, there there was a lot of laws in Scripture about those that were lepers and how you dealt with them. And if you had someone, if you had a family member that was a leper, you were supposed to separate from them. They they had to go live away from you. You couldn't interact with them physically. And, and, and in addition to that, if you were a leper, you would have to walk down the street. And as you walked down the street, you were expected to yell out, unclean! unclean and because some of the lack of understandings about the disease people would move out of the way because they didn't want to have contact with you 
want to talk about something challenging on your, on your mind. And so there was no interaction, physical interaction, I guess except with other lepers. But everybody else, there, there was no touch. And I want you to watch this. This leper comes to Jesus and he, he, he kneels down and he says, if you can make me clean, if you can heal me. And I want you to watch this, verse number 41. And Jesus moved with compassion. And Jesus moved with or moved by compassion. Anybody reading out there? Anybody reading? Or anybody know the story? What's it say? What did Jesus do? He reached out and he put his hand and touched him. And then he spoke. But before he spoke, Oh, hallelujah. I don't, I don't know. We, we're still trying to figure out. I don't know if this is just a complete disconnect. I don't know if I'm making you all uncomfortable because you don't know really where I'm going. Join the club. I'm not totally sure where we're going either. All I know, this is what God has given. We, have, we are in a world that more than ever has an abundance of words. We are not at a lack for words today, but we are at a lack today for somebody that's willing to just maybe close their mouth and not really say anything, but understand not only can I personally communicate something by the power of a touch, but I also can be a conduit that the ultimate one who can touch can touch through me. I understand that he did respond and say, I will be thou clean. But again, before he said one word to that leper, before he uttered one word to him, he just simply, can, can you imagine the initial thought or response? I would, I would have to expect there would have been a little bit of a pulling back. What, what are you doing? not supposed to do that. I'm unclean. You're not supposed to touch me. But Jesus understood. And I think part of the reason Jesus did it the way he did it was, I can simply tell you to be clean and you're going to walk away clean. But there's something on the inside that your physical healing is not going to fix. And so if I will also just simply touch you, I can tell you ultimately how I really feel about you, that I'm not bothered by your leprosy. I don't have issues because of what you're dealing with, and I'm willing to simply touch you. I, I, I'm dragging this out way too long, so I Matthew 8 and 15, Matthew 20 and 34, Mark 10, 13, Mark 8, 22, Luke uh, 22 and 51. All of these are examples of Jesus healing, but there was a touch involved. I will read Mark 10, 13. This one's, uh, this one's amazing to me. They brought young children to him. Parents brought their children to him. And Mark says this, they brought him for one reason. One reason. They wanted him to touch them. And the disciples rebuked those that brought him. That brought them. Don't bother Jesus. Don't bother Jesus with this petty desire. I wonder, I wonder if part of the reason Christianity has lo is losing a generation is because we've gotten so formalized and ritualized that they come and go through the motions of a religious ceremony, but there is no touch. Not only a touch ultimately from Him, but a touch from us to say, words are needed. Yes, we need doctrine. We need the Word of God. I preached that and I'll keep preaching that. 
but we also need to be able, like Jesus, to simply shut our mouths sometimes and simply by a touch. Realize in grammar or whatever else, I don't know that the statement I made in the beginning is the best way of saying it, but it's the best I could come up with, that creation was by words, salvation required hands. Obviously, words, for the most part, come from our mouth. So it wasn't the mouth. Oh, yes, we know. We know that Jesus said all kinds of things on His time on this earth, very important things. We, we know that Jesus spoke to multitudes. We know that Jesus spoke to individuals. We, we know that Jesus spoke to small gatherings of people, large gatherings. We, we know strangers, enemies, followers, all of it. But there was way more than just His words that moved those He ministered to. Last verse, John 20, 27. A little bit of context here in case you don't know the story. Jesus has resurrected some of his disciples, some of his followers have seen him. They know he's alive, but there's one guy in the group. There's one guy in the group that words are just not enough I mean you got to understand these are these are guys that he spent the last three years with. These are guys he's built a relationship with. The, these are guys that he's learned to trust and yet they say, Thomas, he's alive. Jesus is alive. but the words weren't enough. Uh, help me today, Jesus. The words weren't enough. And Thomas tells him, unless I see him, unless I can physically be in his presence, I'm just not going to believe. And so he finally encounters Jesus. John 20 and 27. Then he saith, and that's Jesus he saith to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. I understand that the word touched is not literally in there. But obviously the context of Jesus saying, reach out with your finger, Thomas. Reach out to my hands and reach out to my side. The implication is the thing that ultimately confirmed to Thomas that Jesus was alive was not the words that he had heard spoken by friends and peers. It was not the reports that he had verbally heard, but the thing that ultimately caused Thomas to accept that Jesus is alive is that there was a touch. Oh God, help us today as a church to never move beyond the necessity and the power of touch. I know, I don't know about some of you, but as I keep preaching in the back of my mind, and I'm sure it's probably just the devil, I know, and, and, and I think one of those articles I read, I, I know that, 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 that touching, there is so much inappropriate touching in our world today, and I, I understand that, but let's not take away from the need and the value of what God created because it's misused and abused and mistreated. Because when we do that, we lose the power of something that God designed that nothing can replace. You gotta be honest, as going back to my husband example, this is absolutely no way intended to be offensive towards my wife in any way. 
This is the lessons I've tried to learn. This is not about her. This is about me, okay? But I've actually learned if I'm going to err, and I'm, I'm not trying to be funny right now. Wouldn't be hard to. I'm not trying to be facetious. But if I'm going to err, the damage by erring on the side of a hug is usually a lot less than the damage of erring on the side. You weren't supposed to be. Where, where did you come from? This was easier when I thought you were gone. Oh, well. You can't leave and then reposition. That, it's not fair. I'd rather have to make up because I gave a hug instead of words than trying to make up for words that all that was needed was a hug. That's why, and again, I am one of the lovers of texting and emailing. I'd rather, I'm no I'm trying to be offensive to anybody. I feel this way even with my own family. I am way more comfortable and would rather communicate to you by writing than I would verbally. But there just comes a point in time where your words are not enough. What's really needed is what can be communicated by a touch. And I guess if I could try to close this way, that I guess I feel there's kind of a twofold context of this message today. And I think the first and foremost is I really believe there's some people here today. Some of you that know and would readily admit it, others of you may not be willing to acknowledge it, but I just really feel a burden that there's some people here today that you don't need just a message. You don't need just a word today, but you need a touch. First and foremost, you need a touch from those nail-scarred hands. And social distancing guidelines in place. Some of you are also probably in need of a touch from the body today. And so I think kind of that's the first and foremost burden here today. But I will add, I challenge us as a congregation today. We need our words. We need preaching. We need teaching. We need all of that. We need it. We can't make it without it. But let's not forget when God decided to bring salvation. And when God decided to bring healing, He went beyond His words. I know there were times in which God simply spoke. I gave you just a few of the examples of the times in which there was a miracle needed and rather than just simply saying be made whole, rather than just telling blind eyes to be open or deaf ears to be unstopped, there was a touch that was incorporated in the process of the miracle. So as we try to continue to abide by the guidelines that are in place, let's not forget the fact that as a body, it's not just about our words, and it's not just about the touch. Again, I, I don't think I'm the only one here because no one of us is completely different from everybody. There's some times where it's just that just that somebody walked by, they didn't even say a word, just this is a little little tap on the shoulder. Sometimes it was a little, it was kind of a playful bump. To, I know you ladies probably don't normally really do that, but the guys sometimes you you kind of hit a playful bump and I mean, you actually kind of hit the guy and he stumbles a little bit. There's there, there's some things, I'm not trying to get all, all 
psycho whatever with you today. But there's some things that are being communicated in that. Beyond just the silliness of the moment. Part of what's being communicated is if I'm comfortable enough to come by you and knock you a few feet, I'm saying I got confidence in where you and I are. Because I'm not walking through the mall and walking up to a stranger. That's a whole different kind of touch. I would, I would much rather be trying to preach this today with being able to give an altar call without any kind of restrictions. But once again, all I've done is tried to the best of my ability to follow the leading of the Spirit of the Lord. So I want you to stand. Hear ye, hear ye. This is all being recorded. Please, media department, do not lose this recording. Please don't lose this archive. The official stance is, if you do not live in the house, same household and you are not family, you're supposed to maintain six foot apart. I, I'm really not trying. I've tried my best. Hopefully you've seen that in the last three months. I have tried my best to completely abide and do the best we can to abide, whether I agree it or not. But I, I'm just going to tell you, I'm not trying to be irresponsible, but I, I, if, if I've either just missed God with this message today, and if I haven't, then I just, I just cannot finish without expressing fully my burden. So I'm not trying to be facetious, and I'm not trying to be undermining of what we're supposed to be doing. But if you're here and you're willing to acknowledge that you need a touch first and foremost from the Lord today. Not just a word, not just a, not a rhema. You need a touch. And you're uncomfortable still being touched by strangers. And I want you to just stay right where you are. In a moment, we're going to pray and God's going to touch you. I, I really, I, I know I probably should not do this. I'm sorry. But if you're here today and you're desperate enough to say, I need a touch, Pastor, but I, I think I need a little bit of help getting that touch. I don't think we need 15, 20 people swarming anybody. But if you're willing for one or two people at least to just come up and if nothing else, just stand and kind of lay a hand on you as a demonstration and an expression to say, not only is God touching you, but I'm letting you know that the body you belong to is manifesting that touch then if you if you're willing that and acknowledge that then i'm going to invite you to come stand and if nobody does that i'm not going to assume that i missed it well there's one that's all i needed okay now let's do this if you agree that what I preach is what you need, but again, you're not comfortable, and I 100% respect that. Please, but you acknowledge you need a touch, and you just are not quite willing yet to break the barriers. Would you lift your hands right where you are? Again, if they have not come down here, it's not God telling you to lay hands on them. It's the devil. I'm not being facetious being as serious as I can be. Come on, I, I, I see you. I think one person. I don't believe there's only one person. You just, you need a touch today from God. So if they're still by their seat, they're looking for a touch from God, not a touch from you. And that's completely okay. But a few folks have come to say, I need a little bit more and I'm, I'm okay with that. So if you also... Again, I, I don't want five or six people. In fact, I'm just going to say this, no more than two people at the very most. But if you're willing to be a hand of the Lord right now, you're willing to be a physical representation, would you, would you come and just lay a hand on a shoulder, put a hand on an arm right now? Come on, we need some more. We need more than just words here today. I've never preached anything anywhere like this in my life. And of all the times to preach it, but all I know 
is as I've always tried to do. It's what the Holy Ghost has impressed upon me. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the word of God today. Thank you for scripture that we can read, God, and need that. But I know, and you demonstrated, God, you demonstrated that there are plenty of times that it's more than a word that is needed. It's more than a word. There's a need for a touch. There's a need for our hands to get involved in the process. God, I pray that you would touch my brothers and sisters today. I pray, God, that you would touch my brothers and sisters today. Oh God, help us to be a church that is about more than just words. Help us to be a church that's about more than just simply saying the right thing. Let us be a church that understands that there are needs beyond just a word. There are some things that require a touch. First and foremost, they require a touch from you. But then there are some things and some times in which we need a touch from one another. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today, Jesus, that like that leper, it doesn't matter what we've done, it doesn't matter what the mistakes we've made, you're willing to do more than just speak to us. You're willing to do more than just speak to us. to touch you're willing to touch God touch somebody today touch somebody today as only you can do communicate not only by your words Communicate not only by your words today, but communicate by your touch. Communicate by your touch today. In the name of Jesus, 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 thank you for those nail-scarred hands. Thank you for those nail-scarred hands that so willingly and freely touch us when we have need of it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Aleluya. Aleluya. Alamando robo seki alarabo shataya. Y calaramando robo sata alarabo shataya. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 I know you're probably hot and need to go, want to go, and if that's the case, you're 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 welcome to do that. I said it earlier, but saying I wasn't going to sing it, but I just can't really help myself right now. So again, if you want to go, you can go, but surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power. And His grace I can feel The brush of angels' wings I see glory on each face Surely the presence Of the Lord is in this place Oh, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Oh, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can mighty power and His grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this. One more time. Oh, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face surely the presence of the Lord is in this place I can feel the brush of angels wings I see glory on each face surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. 
Thank you for your presence, Father. Thank you for your presence today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Again, I really hope that we will see most of you this evening join together with us and our brothers and sisters from the rest of Antioch tonight for a time of worship and the presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. God bless you.